Hi guys, Colin here from computerclasses.ie. So iOS 13 just launched and we're gonna have a look at all the main features of it. So if you like the video, please do make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell beside it so that you get a notification every time the new videos go up. So we'll get stuck right in. Okay, so the first feature we're gonna look at is probably the one that people want to see the most and it's the new dark mode. So when you're setting up iOS 13 or if you're setting up a new phone, you will be asked if you want to use light mode or dark mode. So I find it doesn't matter which one you pick because you can always toggle between them later on. So we're going to have a look at how you would quickly toggle between them. So if you swipe down from the top, you will get your display, so your brightness display here. So you can see me toggling it there. Hold your finger down on it and it's going to give you an option down at the very bottom for dark mode. So if I click it, You'll see it automatically puts it onto dark mode and when I show you, you can see then that my wallpaper in the background has gone into dark mode. I'll put it back into bright mode just to show you or light mode and you can see there that you have now it's back into light mode. So these are the new wallpapers that Apple have done. They have four of them. I'm going to go in and show you them. So I'm going to go into my wallpaper section settings and wallpaper and if I go into choose a wallpaper, you can see if I go to my stills. We have four there, the first three on that top row and the and the, sec, the first one on the second row. They all have this wee option at the very bottom right hand corner of them. That means that there's a light and a dark mode to them. So there's two different sides to it. So pick one of them and that will, you'll be able to go between the two of them. Back to our home screen now, I want to show you other ways then you can toggle out. So if we scroll down our control center from the very top, you can see you have the usual things there like your flashlight, your camera, your calculator and so on. But if we go into the settings, so I'm going to tap on the settings option and go to my control center settings then. So if we click on it and there's an option then for customize control. So if I click into customize controls, Scroll down through it, you can see the fourth one on mine here is dark mode with the plus on the side of it, so the more control. So it has the, the ones that it has already there that you can remove them. You have dark mode, if we tip on the plus, you can see it puts it up into the ones that are included. And if you wanted to, you could move it up or down in order. I like to leave it where it goes in because you already know how to use the other ones. We can just go back out of control center, swiping up. Or hitting your home button depending on the model of iPhone that you have if I scroll down now you can see down at the bottom here I have a dark and light mode button there so you can quickly go on now with dark and light mode you can also schedule it so you can schedule it from sunrise so if we go in here and you can see we have the display and brightness options here so if I click into display and brightness options you can see you can automatically pick light and dark mode there and there's also an automatic toggle that we have. So if we put the automatic toggle on, the options show you light until sunset. So what it'll do, as soon as whatever location that you're in is sunset, it will switch into dark mode. So at night time you'll have dark mode and during the day you'll have light mode. So that's a feature that I quite like in it. And that's the one that I'm going to leave on on my own phone. Okay, I want to show you the difference now between dark mode in a couple of, of things. So I'm in light mode at the minute here. And if I go in into my messages and just go to create a message, you can see it's a standard looking keyboard that you have. But if I quickly put it into dark mode, so I swipe down, click on dark mode. You can see now straight away your messages is dark. It has this black thing here. While we're here in the messages, another feature that they have is they're after bringing in a new swipe keyboard. So the swipe keyboard allows you to be able to, instead of having to tap like I'm doing here, you can go in and you can swipe. So instead of putting in U, you can type in Y-O-U and it will put it in. And you can do, can swipe. And you can see it. It will take some getting used to, but it's definitely something that people will find themselves using more, I think, as we go on. Okay, another look then, if I go into calendar, you can see, see here that there's a brand new setup I have working here. So it tells you some of the main things. Now in this tutorial, we're not going to look at any of the um, smaller features. We can do that in another one. This is just to find the main ones here. So here's our calendar. I've gone back to the month view and you can see we're in dark mode at the minute. I can quickly switch it into light mode. And you can see it's back to what you would normally be like. So different times you might want to use dark mode or bright mode. So that's ju just a couple of them. Now another feature that they've added in iOS 13 is this find my at the top here. So 
in years gone by, we always had Find My iPhone, that if you lost your iPhone or mislaid it, you could automatically go into a Find My iPhone on the internet or anywhere on any other phone, and you could locate your phone using either a cellular signal or a Wi-Fi signal. Now, that was sometimes a problem if you didn't have cellular data or if you were out of Wi-Fi network. And what they've done now is it gets a wee bit technical, but I'll tell you exactly what they've done. Your iPhone will now emit a low-powered Bluetooth signal. And what it does is it goes to other iPhones in the area when you're passing or when they're passing your phone and you can locate it that way. So it's pinged. So you don't need a cellular or Wi-Fi network to be able to find it. I won't go into mine here. I'm not signed into this phone or anything. So it will just come up and it would ask me to go to settings to sign in. Another update we've seen comes to maps. So they've put in a look around feature in it. So if you're at a junction, if you're walking through a city, you have a look around option that you can quickly do it. Now this will depend on the, on the city that you're in. So obviously some of the smaller cities we're gonna to have to wait a while, but the biggest one, I'm gonna go in here to my maps, I'm gonna click on it. I've gone into San Francisco here, because if they don't have this one done, they won't have any of, of them done. So if I just go into a random junction, and I hold my finger on it, it to tells me where the junction is, and it also gives me this look around option. I click on look around and you can see I can have a look around to see exactly what is around. It shows me the different streets. If I want to click on one of them, I can go up closer to it and I can then have a look around that street there. So you can see, you can know exactly where you are if you're looking for an address. So that's quite a good feature that we have now in Maps. And as time goes on, it will be rolled out to all the rest of the cities like they have done in the past. Okay, now another of the options that we have is when we're editing pictures. So I just have a picture here. If I tap on the edit button up the very top right hand corner, it takes me into editing mode. Now we've always had a magic wand down at the bottom here, you can see it. But now what they let us do is they let us fine tune it. So when we press the magic wand, it does its own thing. So it goes and it tries to make the photograph better. But it then gives us this sliding bar you can see at the very bottom. And this lets me tune the different elements that it's after doing for us. And we can go in then and we can automatically change it. We could always do that. We could always change the exposure and change the, the brilliance and so on. But this automatic, now we can change the automatic. We can change the levels of them all right the way through it. So you can see there the photograph is doing. So if you have a photograph that's maybe too dark or whatever, you can do it. In the next we window we're going to have a look at the videos then so what we can do with videos okay so when we're in the videos here you can see we have this editing option up at the top now we could always edit the video from the start and finish so we could take a bit of the end and a bit of the start if we wanted to but they've also given us options now that we can tune it so we can change the color balance so you can see we can automatically do it so you can put it up or down. You'll see the color changing there as I drag it. Or you can individually change it. So if we wanted to do the brightness, we could put the brightness up or the brightness down, whatever we wanted. Or we could saturate it one way or the other way. Or we could change the warmth. So there's different ones there you can do. So that's a new option that we have available to us in video editing that wasn't always there. So that is something to play about with that you can try. Okay. Once we tip on it at the end, it saves the video then. We can also do things like adding filter. So you can see we can put in here, we can put filters on the video straight away, add whatever we want to it, different types of filters, and we can play it straight away. So maybe a black and white filter or whatever it is, and we can play our video away. It will save for us. Once we click on done at the very end, the video would save and we could export it then or send it on to somebody without having it to go through the likes of iMovie or anything like that. So it's a good feature you can see. And you can see now we have our video there. It's playing right the way through. It's a slow motion video and You'll see it there. So a good wee feature for videos. For anyone that doesn't just wants to do a wee change to a video, maybe brighten it up or you can also crop it there. If we wanted to crop an area out of the video, we could crop the areas that we don't want out of the video. And you could just make sure that you had the right amount in it that, that you did. So sometimes you just need to make sure that you have the areas of the video that you want, but you could crop it areas out of them to make sure you have the size of the video or rotate that you want. Okay.
So guys, thanks for watching the video. Remember, there's loads of features to iOS 13. We're only trying to highlight the main ones. If you like the video, please do make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit that small bell so that you get notified of any future videos that we put up. Thanks, and we'll see you again.